Hi, this is DC update travel size number five. Five, the number of grace. So I'm going to go into the scriptures that the Lord had given me before we went. Uh, one of them ties into what I shared with you about Mary Deborah, Deborah from Long Island uh, using her 528 tuned tuning fork and praying over me and releasing healing over me, pulling out deep roots and so on and so forth. It was an amazing time, wonderful time, very fruitful time. And um, so at one point she said something about this is like, this is like springing up deep wells. And it's like, ding, ding, ding. This was a passage that I thought perhaps the Lord had put on my heart to sing on the grassy knoll, but uh, that was not what it was for, actually. And it's in uh, Numbers 21, verse 17 and 18. And it says, Then Israel sang this song, Spring up, O well, sing to the well, sunk by the princes, dug by the people's leaders, with the scepter, with their staves. And so when she said that, this is, this is springing up uh, deep wells, I started singing. Spring up, O well, sing to the well, sunk by the princes, Dug by the people's leaders with their scepters and with their staffs, spring up a well, sing to the well. Then it changes to three, four. Sunk by the princes, dug by the people's leaders with their scepters, with their staffs. Now, um, so I spontaneously sang that, and that little tune just stayed in my head. Um, why I thought that I would be singing it uh, from the grassy knoll is because the reconciliation of the generations of lost hope from 1963 forward to Trump draining the swamp um, conciliate together over the wellspring of the destiny of the United States of America as it was written in her scroll. And the Lord doesn't take down any nation uh, before it's time. And some of them he doesn't have to take down at all. He keeps turning them and turning them and turning them and turning them like a potter works with clay on a wheel so that he can form them into a vessel of honor or a vessel of dishonor however it goes according to his will so does it go and the obedience of the clay has a little bit to do with it because clay that keeps jumping off the potter's wheel or saying what you doing about all that what you doing with that what you making me into doesn't get quite the beauty and the intricacy of the master's hand upon it as the one who is patient and obedient in the Lord's hands. So anyway, I thought uh, it was very significant. Spring up a well, and I say in the name of Yeshua, let the well, wellspring of the destiny of the United States of America spring up, spring up, spring up from the depths of the Father's heart. Let it be restored unhindered and unhampered. We sing for joy at the well because our life is not over. The United States of America is not a ship lost at sea or a ship wrecked and sunk. Not at all. Not by any means. Mm -mm. And uh, the well was, this is a real source of joy for me, that the well was sunk by the princes, dug by the people's leaders with the scepter. The scepter is a sign of kingship, queenship the ultimate authority and with their staves the things that they use to lead the people with correct the people with draw the people back with and I, you know being in dc i couldn't help but think of the founding fathers it was impossible not to um, who set up the country to pledge allegiance to the lord in god we trust one nation under god indivisible with justice and mercy for all. The Lord's really hammering on that justice and mercy 
for all, indivisible with justice and mercy for all. And some have uh, quoted him as liberty and justice for all. He's saying that as well in this hour. That's his desire, justice and mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment, but justice is the enacting of the law of God upon an unjust system or an unjust ruling. You could even substitute the word unrighteous, which of course is displeasing to him and he does not honor. So justice and mercy are two sides of the same coin. And it's the Lord that flips the coin. So pray to the Lord for mercy. Pray to the Lord for justice, not judgment, justice for those who have been falsely accused, justice for those who have been in the business of using dishonest scales, which Proverbs tells us he hates, businessmen and corporations that constantly manipulate their commerce flow, their income streams to plagiarize, torment, and make sick, if not kill, the people because it's a faster turnaround on their profit gain. That is disgusting to the Lord. That is unacceptable to the Lord. You know, I mean, mm, let his justice be served, but let his mercy be shown. Let his justice be served, but let his mercy be shown. How can his mercy be shown in a situation like that? At any point, when a man or a woman, even the top of a corporation, who has done, has a legacy of 50, 100 years, 125 years of unrighteous gain, of false balances and scales, of uh, poisoning the people, of bloating the cattle, I'm just saying, randomly saying things so you can find a niche to catch on to. Um, hiring six-year-old children, paying them a quarter and working them 12 hours with no food, no bathroom breaks. That's not just in the eyes of the Lord at all. So how does mercy happen? Mercy happens when that soul repents, when that soul is convicted of their sin, I pray, pray, pray that those who are in line for justice to be served or judgment to fall. See that? Justice when it falls, judgment when it falls, crushes and gets rid of the offense the offensive structure or leader. But justice can be served as a notice. Justice can be brought to the leader or to the head by an angel, by a person, by some, some intervention that says, this is the judgment that is coming. Turn now, confess your sin and repent that the Lord may give you mercy, that the Lord may show you mercy. You know, I mean, the example in Scripture of that that I, I truly love, and yet at the same time truly hate, is the example of the man that the king brought before him and said, hey, you know what? You have owed me $2,000 for too long. Pay it up uh, now, or your whole family, you and your whole family are going into prison. And so the guy was like, he freaked out, and he's like, give me some time. Hold on, I'll get it for you. And so he runs out, and he makes everybody that owes him pay him, and he pays the king. And as soon as the king says, oh, that's fine, I, I accept it, you're forgiven, go on your way. And then, no, wait a minute. No, the king forgave him out of his mercy. That's what it was. Please forgive me. The king out of his mercy forgave him. Then that guy went to every single person that ever owed him a cent. 
and was very forceful, unforgiving, belligerent, mean, unkind, and beat them to get it out of them. And somebody told the king, hey, remember that guy that you forgave, that huge debt? It was more than $2,000, huge, huge debt. He's going and he's harassing other people that owe him money to get it back and turning them into slaves, blah, 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 blah. And the king was so furious at that man and he got his justice. Pray that those who deserve judgment will have a moment where justice is served to them and that the scales fall off of their eyes. Their understand, the hearts of their understanding is opened and that they may quickly confess their sin to the Lord. It is against the, the Lord and the Lord only that they've sinned because only He's perfect, right? There are crimes against humanity. There are crimes against nations even. There are crimes against cities. There are crimes against people. But ultimately, the only perfect one is the Lord God Almighty and His Son, Yeshua, whom I love so much. As I tell you almost every time I get on this talk, this opportunity to talk, I love Him so much. But they, He and His Father are the only perfect ones and Holy Spirit and the seven spirits before the throne. You get where I'm going with this. Only God is perfect. And so only He has no sin to confess. So go to Him and confess. And then pray that in that moment, that aperture, that quick little right before the camera snaps and the picture has been taken and forever it's captured as this is what it was. That moment that aperture opens and closes and the light flashes in and sight is, is there for that moment. Pray for them that in that moment the spirit of repentance comes upon them so they can, so they can turn away from sin and turn to righteousness, and that they will meet the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who came in the flesh in that moment, and give their lives to Him and be saved. So I'm going to stop because it's 12-12, or it was until I kept talking. So uh, I'm going to stop right now, and all we've done is talk about uh, what He had on my heart to talk about, and what He said when I gave Him my mouth to speak. So I pray that it blessed you. Um, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>